Welcome in to Memorial Stadium here in Joliet, Illinois. Ooh, give me two beats! Again! Give me two beats, two cops in the air! Yeah! Your University of St. Francis football team opened up the 2019 season in a big way. 15 seconds into the opening game at USF Illinois, quarterback Matt Crable found senior receiver Rocky James down the left sideline for a 26-yard touchdown. One play, one TD. Looks, throws over the middle, has a ball tipped in the air and caught again. Little motion left to right by Call. Here's a quick screen, comes to him, and he's got it for a touchdown. He's up on the wing to the left side where Call normally plays. Protection thrown. Here's Christman's got it inside the five. Dives for the pylon. Let's see with the touchdown. Christman, 22 yards. Short drop. Here's the fade throw into Rocky James. He's got the catch and he's got a touchdown. If he holds on, he does. That one, good. He is dead beat as USF uh, came pouring through there. Jamison in his third down, and here's Denman drops, looks, now scrambled, and he is buried again. Fourth ball, and uh, Deacon and Dukin, and that's a good one by Dwayne Milton. The top three Cougars have got it. And the first offensive play of the third quarter, Crable hit Duke Blackwell for a 35-yard score. The junior QB finished the game with a USF record tying six touchdown passes. And your Cougs rolled to a 56-6 victory to open the season. Williams stays in as the running back and turn a spin play. Here is Simmons, throws it left side. He's got Kamakawich and into the end zone, a little crossing pattern to the left side. That is good for a touchdown. Wallace again cuts to his left, up and into the end zone, spins back pedals for the touchdown. And just 15 seconds into the Cougars win on Saturday, the cruise control button was set as quarterback Matt Crable threw his first touchdown pass. St. Francis stunned St. Francis of Illinois as Crable connected with his wide receivers for six scores in the game. The number three ranked team out of Fort Wayne showed its superior offense and defense, gaining their first W of the year. I thought offensively we did a really good job executing. You know, we uh, we took what the defense gave us, and uh, that's uh, that's what uh, you know we harp on all the time. You know, they they stopped the run well. They wanted to load the box, and uh, so we went. We just threw it on them, uh, for a good amount. So I, I think we did a really good job of uh, taking what they gave us. Um, offensively, we, we was con uh, clicking from the start. We was moving the ball, uh, no turnovers. So we was moving. We was doing pretty good offensively, and uh, put together as a unit. So that was the overall goal. Crable became the third at QB to throw six touchdown passes in a game. It's not about me, it's about we. So that it, it, it was just nice to see everybody flying around, defensive line making moves, and everybody just making moves in general. I mean, we do pursuit drills day and night here at practice, so it's just great to see that translate over to a game where everybody's flying to the ball, all 11 guys around the ball every single time. There's no secret they've been standing on the 50-yard line staring at you guys for the past 30 minutes. Woo! Teams yeah. do that when they're in awe of somebody. Yeah. I don't need right. to stand over there and watch them. You know why? Because I'm looking at the best defense in the country. Up next was another road game in Illinois outside Chicago, this time at Robert Morris. And oh boy, did it rain. But the torrential downpour did not slow down P.J. Dean who rattled off a 70-yard touchdown run. The senior running back eventually would have to leave the game due to injury. It will be a touchdown, 78 yards. And your Cougs hold on for the 29-16 win. And then there was this, an 84-yard punt return score by Matt Komenkevich. The is the longest ever punt return in the 22-year history of USF football. And there he goes, Cougars won. 29-16 in spite of limited availability of quarterback Matt Crable and some really bad weather and by their own admission also some ill-advised play of their own. We did okay in the first half, we still missed some things, um, but the second half we really got to be better with, we really got hit with a lot of penalties, we were just sloppy in general, so we got to be better in that. We're just dealing with the, the rain and you know the late game time and all that, uh, I think we handled it really yeah. well and uh, you know we went out there and executed and came out pretty dominant in the first half. We were really trying to take away the run, they had a really good line and really good running back, uh, I think Stopping the run is important in every game, but against them, they have a really big old line. It's, it was imperative that we got out early and stopped the run early. Most improvement you get from week one to two when we're playing. 
So we got to make it from week three to week four um, of, uh, of the improvement level. We've got to get a lot better this week. Not only is the game with St. Ambrose this coming Saturday the USF's first home game of the season, it'll be homecoming at Darcy Stadium as well. It wasn't until September the 28th before your Cougars played its home opener, taking care of homecoming business against St. Ambrose. Looking and looks to hand the ball off. No, he wants to throw. Throws that. He's got a wide open man. Here's over the shoulder. Catch touchdown. Matt Kamenkewicz, 30 yards on, and on the money. Crable taking a look now. Hands the ball off. Here's a running, and there is a run by Martel Williams. Will Williams to the house. Here's a snap, give to that tail back, Hawkins tries his way through the middle, gets out of a tackle, ball is free, it's on the ground. Who's got it is the question. St. Francis comes up with the ball, a huge turnover that time by the USF Cougars. Too wide to the right for Crable out of the gun. Short drop, looks right side, he's got Duke Blackwell on the fingertips, on the money with that toss. Watch line up to the left side, out of it they have motion back left to right and Beckendorf looking to screen and he's not going to go anywhere. And James Jamison. And here is a play action fake. Beckendorf loads, throws the fade to the right corner. He's got a man out there, ball fought for, intercepted in the end zone. Will he bring it out? Ryan Johnson does bring it out across the 10, 15 to the 20 yard line. Looking for a block, angles near sideline. Hold down. Oh, and let's see if that's a penalty. That looked like a horse collar to me. In front of the USF sideline, junior Casey Call made a great catch stiff-armed his way to a 64-yard touchdown. He will score! Casey Call, if he stayed in bounds, this will be a touchdown pass of some 64 yards. Meanwhile, Blitz showing defensive right side. Here's Crable looking, looking, dances, throws over the middle. He's got Kamakewicz, get down! He's got it in his fingertips. USF wins 31-13. It was a 3-0 start to the season, for the number three ranked team in NAIA football, with conference rival Marion up next. Coach Donnelly kind of set the game plan up, told us the outside backer was gonna be really active, and Crable just put the ball where it needed to be, and I had to go make a play, and it just happened. Yeah, I think we started out well. Um, going into 2019, I thought one of the, the top strengths we had was our defensive line, and by game four that changed and we, we had some season ending injuries that were uh, affected us drastically. We had to get some younger uh, players ready that wasn't really counting on until 2020 but you know it's the next man up you got to get ready to go. So we went through some learning curve issues and, and lack of experience but we started out well and, and we competed well. Middle right. Middle right. We got to get our blocks and run them out of there. They're getting down too far on us too fast, okay? Middle right. Hey, how's it going? One, two, three, hustle. Biggest game of the year tonight for the St. Francis Cougars. It's in Indy with third ranked Cougs meeting sixth ranked arch rival Marion in a battle of unbeatens. Cougar faithful making that journey to Indy. They know this is always a big one and it is on the Cougs because they will never leave. They already down 7-0 early second with Charles Salary. Reads some great blocks, dances his way to the end zone from 13 yards out, doubling the Marion lead to 14-0. Coach D, well aware he can't let the Knights get too far ahead of his guys, and his guys will drive it down and cut the lead in half. A dive into the end zone by Montel Williams. If they can keep this going, it can still be a good night. But that lead goes back to double figures when Ethan Darter and Jacob Prisler combine on this 44-yard scoring pitch and catch, 21-7 nights. They take the Cougars down tonight in Indy, 28-10. The loss to Marion sets up this Saturday to be perhaps the biggest game of the year for St. Francis. The eighth-ranked Cougars hosting number four Concordia University out of Ann Arbor. Cougars will be a bit shorthanded up front. Defensive lineman Ethan Vanover and Mitchell Thornberry both now out for the season due to injuries. We know we don't have to play like Superman. We know that if we just play Cougar football, then we'll be fine. You know, we, we, if we go out there and handle business the way we know that we can handle business, then everything should take care of itself. We need to come out and play as all 11. we got to form a fist, and we got to play as a fist. We can't have anybody wanting anything else, doing anything else. we got to come out as a team, work together, and if we work together, we, we will be the best ones out there. 
Kickoff against Concordia set for 6 o'clock Saturday night at Bishop Darcy Stadium. Following the loss at Marion, USF, now ranked number 8, took on another top 10 conference opponent as the number four ranked Cardinals from Concordia, Ann Arbor invaded Bishop Darcy Stadium. And Crable diving in, he scores! First and 10, read option again. Morrison uh, wants to throw, pivots to his left side and running out of time and buried as coming through the Cougars nailed him back. Peter Morrison out of Concordia High School looking to throw time in the pocket. Now it disappears and he's wrapped up and sacked. Third wave crew got him. Jamal Jackson wrapped him up for a sack. And now Weber, that kick is blocked. Free ball picked up and USF is going to score off of it. Touchdown Cougars. Big three five. With the short side to the left. And here's Crable wanting to throw. Rush is coming. He tries to find a man and a leaping a catch. Rocky James again inside the five. First and goal. Williams offset to the right. Short drop. Rush is coming. Stepping up. Crable can run. He can throw. He throws late. He's got a touchdown catch. Cougars capitalize. Now for Concordia. Short drop. Crable looks. Looking to his right. Now throws it as far as he can. He's got Rixie downfield. He's got the ball for a moment and he holds on. It'll be first and 10 outside the 15 yard line. Dan Rixie doing what Dan Rixie does. Wallace remains in there as the running back. It'll be second down and goal from the four. Here's Crable jump pass over and he's got a catch touchdown. Big play. Now looks and hands it off. Oh. No, he won't get it. At the five yard line, the Cougars came knifing through there. Sent out to the right side and Morrison high snap, wants to throw, drops, looks, has time, pulls it down and sacked back outside the 35. And here's Morrison steps up, wanting to scramble, stripped and trapped again back outside the 40 yard line. And the Cougars make another play defensively. Keith Simmons, two protectors, wants to throw, throws the fade, he's got Rocky James. Fingertip catch, he's got it inside the 15. That's the old Rocky James we know and love. Tied at 27, with 17 seconds remaining in the game, Concordia lined up for the go-ahead field goal. Senior defensive tackle Matt Schwartz blocked the kick. Jack Gibbons scooped it up and raced 72 yards for the game-winning touchdown. Touchdown! The Cougars come back and strike, and they will win this football game with seven and a half seconds remaining. Had great wins. Uh over Concordia. Um, Swartz blocks the field goal at the end of the game. Jack Gibbons runs it in for the score. Um, very exciting football game. One of the most exciting that I've coached in. We played well there. They're a good football team. I knew going into that last kick that there was the opportunity for any one of us to get through that line. And uh, Coach Wagner just knew that, that left too heavy was going to be that play to call and it just so happened to, that it all went in our favor. The Cardinals, they score 21 straight points. Sinclair once again this time around the left side in the end zone. It's knotted at 27 after a Cougars turnover. Cardinals in position for the game winning kick with just 17 seconds left. USF had other plans. Snyder grad Matt Schwartz gets his hand on the kick and it bounces right to Carroll grad Jack Givens. Givens and takes it. Takes it to the house. The dramatic game winner, the Cougars, they take it 34 27, the final. Our coach broke us out and just said, hey, just just block it. Let's let's do this. And it was thanks to RJ, John, Ryan Johnson on the other side, number 21. He blocked it. It came right to me and it was just perfect, just the way we drew it up. I kind of just like blinked everything out, just took it off. I don't get the ball that often, so it was pretty fun to run. But, but like, just being able to do that just for my, for my grandparents who both passed away in the past few years. They live far away. They never got to see me play, but I know they saw that one. Getting to see, do that for my team. It's just in a game like this. It's just it means the world. What an awesome moment for Givens. The Cougars, they host Indiana Wesleyan for the first time next Saturday. There's not any two individuals that have given any more of themselves than those two. Um, Swartz uh, and Jack both very quiet, unassuming people who are, were team guys that uh, always did what they were asked to do to the, the best of their ability. And then you come down in crunch time like that, and, and Swartz just uh, 
made a gutsy play and, and bull rushed right through the middle of, of the the protection on the field goal and got a hand on it and um, you know I think Coach Wagner and Coach Will are great not good but great special teams coaches they, they practice that you know they place Jack out there on the edge in case that block comes you pick it up and you scoop and score and that's exactly what happened so it wasn't just a stroke of luck um, we made that play happen. Cardiac Cougs did it again on Saturday for the second straight week St. Francis had to come from behind for a hard-fought win against Indiana Wesleyan. The Cougars made it happen the following week as well. First new conference rival, Indiana Wesleyan. The Wildcats, playing in the program's second season, can play. High kick is caught at the six. Adams with a return left. Beautiful block there by Casey Call. Another one by Christian Bella who knocks out two guys. And Van Gunn is going to take him out at the 48-yard line. What a return. He Simmons. Looking for Dan Rixey. Rixey doing a great job shielding the defender. That's a touchdown, Cougars. 31-yard strike. Casey Call with the lead block. And P.J. Dean takes it up the gut for a Cougar touchdown. Block got to him first. Third and one now from the 34. Martell Williams, he's got it! And he's gonna burst through. Martell Williams, touchdown, Cougars! Second goal from the four. Martell Williams back in the game. Duke Blackwell in motion. The fake sweep, and Williams in for a touchdown! like Walsh is going to come in on the blitz and does. Hand off to Alford. He was walled off and McCormick nearly makes a tackle for a loss. And Kyle Miazga cleans it up. It's Joe Nepper, the punter with the hole. Gardner is up and it's in. 31-21. Cougars take the lead. Gavin Gardner with his 23rd career field goal. Alford in the backfield, Blair under center, handoff goes Alford, he's mad right away! All-American receiver Braden Smith caught a touchdown pass over USF's Chris Colley to pull the team within one point, with 39 seconds remaining in the game. On the two-point conversion attempt, Colley breaks up the pass, and USF wins 31 to 30. And it's broken up! Came down with two-point conversion with less than a minute to play, Iwu went for the win, you're gonna see it right here, but USF able to come up with the game-saving stop. It wasn't pretty, but you'll take a win any way you can get it after falling into a 14 to nothing hole. Big reason why the Cougs were able to climb out, a sensational effort from sophomore Martell Williams, who racked up 175 yards and two tutties on 22 carries. That's two weeks in a row now, Williams, who started the season as a backup, has gone over a hundo. Well, you know, he took advantage of an opportunity uh, on an injury, you know, with P.J. I mean, he stepped up and really did a good job. P.J. down, you know, it's the next man up here, just just like you saw today. Uh, Martell's done a fantastic job just getting, my, just getting behind the offensive line, trusting them and making his reads and running the ball. I'm real comfortable. It's just, like I said, we got a good group, um, good online, good running back, so, like, I feel very confident in my, me and my teammates. Williams and the Cougs will host Siena Heights in their regular season home finale next weekend. That'll be a good one. Indiana Wesleyan, which is going to be a team to be reckoned with. I mean, they've got a, a tremendous institutional commitment to, to be uh, uh, on top. Um, they're good. They had transfers and played an outstanding quarterback who's a senior and um, got them all the way down there. Went for a two-point conversion at the end and uh, Chris Colley, who got beat on the play before, comes back and, and makes the play for the two-point conversion. So that's the kind of resiliency and, and response to adverse circumstances that you got to have in this game. Please stand and applaud your 2019 senior class. A lot of players stepped up in 2019 and leading the charge was running back Martell Williams, who had a 98-yard touchdown run for Siena Heights, tying a USF record set by Justin Green in 2016. A 98-yard touchdown 
for the sophomore Martell Williams. Cougars now down seven to six. Call the fullback to the left. Crable looking downfield. He's going deep for Rocky James. What a catch! Rocky James going to take it down all the way to the 40 yard line. That's going to be a gain of 45 yards on the play for the senior, Rocky James. A huge gainer. And actually, they're going to mark that ball at the 38 yard line. Crable out of the shotgun. Rixie on the bottom of your screen. Crable gonna loft this one up for Rixie. Timing pattern, touchdown, Cougars. A 30 yard strike from Matt Crable to Dan Rixie. Crable just lofted that one up there. Rixie had his sights on it. And Dan Rixie played that DB for the score. Rixie, the team's leading receiver, his third touchdown on the season. So Gavin Gardner into attempt, the PAT. Well, Martell is one of those guys uh, just like uh, Swartz and, and Givens. I mean, you know, very quiet, unassuming young man who's always uh, given his best effort, done what he's coached to do, and, and has been a team guy. So... Um, you know, we, we had those injuries, you know. We lose P.J., or, uh, uh, gosh, I think game two of Robert Morris. And uh, so, you know, it's the next guy up, and he got his opportunity and capitalized on it. And uh, obviously that 98-yard run, that might have been the longest or tied for the longest or close to it. I remember Jay Green had one in the semifinals of Reinhardt in 16. But, uh, boy, they were, they were game changers. More Cougar records were on display in Southfield, Michigan against Lawrence Tech University. Senior receiver Dan Rixey had four touchdowns, tying the USF record for touchdown receptions in a game for the second time in his career. And into the end zone for a touchdown. Long wide to the right side. Play action fake, Crable again, looks Rixey's way, throws the fade down the right side, he's got the over shoulder of the catch and he's into the end zone, touchdown. Yeah, you know, um... You know, it all starts with my big dogs up front, you know. all starts with them, and then, you know, the coaches call the plays, and we just go out there and do what we can do. And today just happened to be one of my lucky days to where, you know, everything was going right for me. Simmons out of the pistol now. Looks, wants to throw it. Looks right, throws the fade. He's got Rick's seat down there. He's got the catch, and he's got his third touchdown of the ball game. 30 yards on the touchdown pass play. Danny is a, a very talented young man. Uh, very talented athlete, had great speed and athleticism, you know, uh, probably wasn't anything physically he couldn't do. And um, yeah, he had a big game against Lawrence Tech, at Lawrence Tech and had a great career. Um, I think he was the leading receiver in our uh, 2017 uh, title team. Had some big plays in that final game, so he had an outstanding career. Um, he's also a, a brilliant young man, you know, he, uh, I've always been pushing him. Uh, to do a little bit better in the classroom. I think he could probably be a 4.0 student if he wanted to. And um, I, I hope that he sees that and you know, finishes that degree and, uh, because I think he can do just about anything once he puts his mind to it. Junior kicker, Gavin Gardner, kicked his 24th career field goal, setting a new program record. Coots roll, 59-20. Well, you typically don't try to, you know, focus on that. It definitely was in the back of my head that I knew that it, the next one could be the record setter. But if that's the main mindset for me, then I don't think I'd have performed very well today. But I, luckily, it was in the back of my head, and I just wanted to perform the best that I could for my team. And it ended up working out the way that I wanted to see it. Ah, come on! Now. Oh yeah! Oh yeah! There you go! There oh you go. yeah! It's always a good time in Upland, Indiana, for your Cougars, as they menaced Taylor QB Drew Lefevre. Crable looks and spins, throws the home run ball. He's got Rixie downfield inside the 10 to the 5. Did he score? Reaches out. Touchdown. Receiver is out as well. Play action fake. Here's Crable wanting to throw again down the middle. Looking, he's got a man wide open. The ball is caught for a Cougar touchdown. I think that's Rocky James, and this one will stand. 
Edwards at the right side hash mark. Looks to hand the ball. No, play action fake. Wants to throw again. Pulls it down, and then he is nailed. That was Matt Swartz that lowered the boom. From right to left, they'll reset. Here's a run, and they'll give the ball off, and let's see if they got in for the end for the touchdown, and uh, no indication yet. Cougars have stopped him. Did not get in. Lefevre tried to dive for it, but came up short. And here is Crable. Looks to throw quickly, and he's got call wide open. Nobody near him. Five-yard touchdown. And here is the read option, and uh, the run. Zaltz gave her captain himself, and Jamal Jackson. Second down and long. Now they've got Burdine in motion to the wide side. Screens a ball and knocked down. Cougars were coming with pressure up the middle. Miles McClendon was there. They need to stop this one. Zaltzgaber looks to the left. Now checks off. Ball is hit as he throws in the air, and it's incomplete. And that will stop that drive. Coming in there and making that play, that was key beyond Evans. Zaltzgaber again. Park and the guns run that option. Now cuts it up and spins and dropped outside the 20th to 21. Red better that time. First and 10. Crable will be handed off. He wants to throw. Steps up the pocket, throws the home run ball. Looking, here's a fingertip catch caught. Inside, Rocky James stumbles into the end zone. Touchdown, USF. We got to get back to what we did best on offense, you know, struggling against Siena Heights and dropping that game. We couldn't afford to lose another. So going into Lawrence Tech and Taylor, we knew that the offense had to turn it on. And um, I think we did a really good job of uh, getting back to what we did best. And uh, I think it showed. Last year, Coach D passed Paul Bear Bryant with the win against the Trojans. This year's 27 to 14 win moved Kevin Donnelly to number six all time with 333 career wins, passing Mount Union's legendary coach, Larry Karras. Finishing the regular season with a seven and two record and ranked number 11, USF was selected to the NAIA Football Championship Series for the 19th time in 22 seasons. We understand you guys have been chosen to be leaders of your respective teams. Everybody's looking to you to be examples, right? Okay, let's make this game better when we end than when we started. All right, and remember, in the NAIA, it's all about champions of character, okay? This time, traveling to Columbia, Kentucky to take on the undefeated number six rank, Lindsey Wilson. And now motion left to right behind the line of scrimmage on a sweep coming up. Are they going to try the double pass? They will throw into the end zone. Wobbly balls up there for grabs and caught. Let's see, is it? No, it was intercepted. So the Cougars get it back on a pick. Here's the snap. He'll run it himself. Off tackle, left side. Finds the running room. Inside the 10, inside the 5. Diving for the pylon. Did he get in? They're going to mark him down inside the 2. Crable with the snap. Looks to Wallace. He'll run to the left and into the end zone. Duke Blackwell to the right. Play action fake. Crable wants to throw. Looks on the crossing pattern and a diving catch. Wallace back in as the running back, offset to the right side. Play action fake, Crable looking, steps up, wants to run. Is not going to get their second effort, dive for the goal line. Did he get in? Touchdown! To the left side, hash mark, short drop, looks, steps up, scrambles, wrapped up by Swartz. This time he's not letting go. That's a sack. Here's Jack James driving, low line kick will take a bounce, and that is fumbled, picked up at the goal line. Gain a return across the 5 to the 10. Given ground, and that cost him. Good play downfield. Looking, gives ground, wants to throw. Looks, looks, throws over the middle. And that one's picked off at the 20-yard line. Here's a move by Jalen Moss to the 10. And St. Francis with a pick. One-yard line if they need it. Here's motion back to the near side. Crable wants to throw on the quick slant. And it is there. Rixey, does he have it? He does for a touchdown. Oh! And Boyd offset to left. He comes in motion back to the near side. Here's a little spin move. Dukes is wrapped up and dropped though back around the 24. Looks being shown defensive left side. But, and they'll run the ball that way. And running room, P.J. Dean leaps over one tackle at the 20, to the 15, to the 10, to the 5. Touchdown, P.J. Dean to the house. Good for 38 yards. And the Cougars expand on their four-point lead. Too wide to the right. Dukes looks that way. Now steps up. Gets away, scrambles to the right, and then hit and drop back at the 31-yard line. At the defensive end spots. Dukes, it'll be a double pass coming up. They want to throw the ball long and deep. It's a rainbow pass coming up, and that ball is knocked away. Good play defensively by St. Francis. 
And no penalty flag. You can hear the crowd below. They wanted one, but that was up for grabs. Dukes again, read option. Once the throw steps up, has time, throws, and a comeback ball. That, thing, that ball is, is it caught? The USF defense recorded three interceptions in the game, bringing its season total to five. Senior defensive end James Jamisich recorded a strip sack in the fourth quarter to tie a USF record for career sacks with 27.5. You know, he, he was. I mean, he, he was an impact his freshman year. Uh, gosh, he, he played in 16, 17, and then and, and right on. And then his senior year, the injury bug bit him, and he had to fight through a lot of things, which slowed him down a bit. Nonetheless, he's still All-American in his senior year, and uh, that's quite a, quite a feat. So he had a tremendous career. He's a tremendous young man, and whatever he chooses to do, he will indeed be successful. The Blue Raiders would go on to score twice in the final two minutes and 39 seconds of the game, winning 30 to 26. It was a tough loss for the Cougs, who are now 16 and three all time in NAIA FCS first round games. I think of the real team guys, um, you know, Clay Scenarius, Danny Naylor. I mean, those are guys that did the. Uh, what well, we asked of them, never started a ball game. You talk about team guys that were committed. I'm going to miss them dearly. Uh, Rocky James, you know, he, he's just an uh, electric guy, you know, you have to love. And Blake Schumacher, you know, he, uh, man, he, you know, just a guy of character and played so well. His first start in college football was in the 16 national title game. So, you know, he had a tremendous career. I go on and on. Senior class, uh, we love you. We're going to miss you. To you guys returning, um, you know, we got a challenge ahead of us, and we're going to take it head on and get better and better. And same goal, and that's to be number one.